How's your week going? Good? Been having a good week? About this time, usually, still nothing up here. It's all going that way. Uh, about this time, we've already been, we've been out soul winning, and that gets me pumped up, Brother Bezdale. And I had a great breakfast with him this morning. He's a cool guy. Y'all should take him out, and he's good company. But I, I'm usually still no good. Just right here, Kev. Maybe some of her. Um, you know, we're going out soul winning. There we go. Yeah. Now we're, now we're getting it. You, you ever been in a stadium and you're singing? Okay, never mind. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's all going that way, and you don't hear any of yourself. Uh, you know, when you're in the shower and you're, no, that's no good. Uh, but when we go out to these restaurants, I always eat my normal meal, and then, you know, I'm walking around making sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, which means I'm stealing their food, whatever the leftovers. I always, there's skinny teenage girls in our youth group for a reason, because I always eat their food before they finish it. And, uh, you know, I'm going, is it ringing? Did you hear that? And um, anyway. I'm self-conscious about the PA till it gets right, sorry. Uh, and then I have my shake, Brother McCain, and then my cup of coffee. And so I'm like, <laughs> by, the time, by the time team time rolls around, I'm ready to go and preach. So I was, I was going to lay off the cup of coffee tonight, Brother Jonathan, but I did it. So if I get hyper or I get a little shaky or jittery, it's just because I had my usual cup of coffee. But usually I'm running around acting crazy over there, and uh, you may get a little bit of the same. But this message was a... It was a Sunday school talk. It wasn't even a, um, wasn't preachy. It was, um, I don't know, more instructional. And I have just a few senior high boys. You know, we get in there for uh, teen opening, and we meet with everybody, and everybody splits, and I'm left with about eight teenage boys, our older ones. And I just try to talk to them, Brother Rich. I just try to just counsel them a little bit on how to live and how you know, I made it through some of my tough times, you know, as a teenage boy, and what would help them? And I'd say probably about two and a half weeks ago, uh, we've been in a series about being used by God on Wednesday nights, and that transitioned to prayer. And I'm going through the book of Acts, and I'm finding that they daily met in the Word and were praying. And it was an everyday occurrence. And so I'm noticing being used by God is in direct connection with their prayer life. And obviously, we as Christians, we understand that, but I don't think we take it seriously uh, like they took it seriously. And uh, they took prayer very seriously. And so I've, I've been going through, and I took one day, and I went through the whole New Testament, every prayer uh, reference, and broke that down. And then I landed in the book of James, chapter 5, a famous passage on prayer. There's, it's rich, full of, of nutrients there when it comes to our prayer life. And then, of course, you're back in Matthew, chapter 6, uh, talking about the Lord's Prayer. And I think that that gets taken out of context, so to speak, uh, in many different, you know, what we would call religions. Um, but as I begin to study this prayer thing, you know, and how it was going to affect my life, I just came away with just a few principles. And last week, or last Sunday morning, I just, told, I just sat in front of them. I read a few passages of scripture, and I just said, you know, fellas, it's about today. It's not about tomorrow. It's not about the future. It's about today. It's about you doing what you need to do and what God wants you to do today before you focus on your future. And I had a few points about prayer for today. And I, I hope that it's a, a help to you tonight, a blessing. I may get, uh, you know, excited in a few places of it, but more than the excitement, more than the jokes or whatever, it always is, ends up laced with something, humor or, don't miss the point tonight. Don't miss the fact that tonight is about prayer, and it's about prayer for today, and it's about prayer on a personal level that will keep you from sin. And I, I think that that's, that's just a big downfall that we have. We live in a society that's just full of sin. I fight sin every day. I don't think we realize how much we, we battle sin as Christians. And in my, my job description... It dictates that I am a watchman on the wall, as Pastor calls it, and, and I try to look out for sin. Somebody answer it. <laughs> um, but what do you, what's your attitude towards sin? What's your attitude towards wrong things? It's been a tough couple months, hasn't it? The devil is fighting this youth group. And just to be candid with you tonight, he's fighting you parents. And you know, he's fighting some of you through your kids. 
And, you know, he's tried you, and he's tried to, he's tried to get you to talk to him. He's tried to get you to pray, and you haven't. And so he says, okay, you got enough pride in you to make it through the quitting places or to make it through the testings and the trials. Okay, David, the temptation. You'll admit when you're wrong. You'll come, you'll come back to this situation of prayer one time, but what about the consequence when I take that baby? Then what? Hey, parent, you're good now, but what about when he gets to your child? And you know what? They're dropping like flies. Say, you know, my kid's good, are they? Your kid, you're right, your kid is a good kid. We have great kids in our youth group. I'm very proud of them. I've watched them make huge strides. But could it, could it be better? Could you have a better relationship with them? Man, Brother Matt, how do you connect with them? How do you have this open relationship? And some of your kids, I don't have an open relationship with them because of sin. Because of things that they know I don't agree with. But I try to keep that communication line open. But what, how does that happen? Well, a few things before I jump in the message. Let me give you a few practical points before we jump into prayer. Weekly activities with your kids. Weekly routines. This is my one chance to jab here. Something stupid, something educational, something spiritual, and something physical once a week. Say, so how do we have a connection? How do we keep from losing our kids to sin and the devil? Before I get focused on you on a personal level of prayer, which will help, what about your kids? What about, what about stopping the devil from, from, from uh, attacking them? Because it's going to be the same message I'm about to preach to you. You need to preach to them about prayer, and you better believe their youth pastor has done it. But you as a parent can, can involve yourself in their life in such a way that keeps them from the devil. And keeps them from the strange woman. And keeps them from the alcohol and from the drugs. And from, you say, in a Christian school, my kid? <laughs> yes. Parents, if you're not talking to them about it, their classmates talking to them about it, their person in Sunday school is talking to them, somebody's talking to your kid about sin. Somebody's getting into them. Somebody is making sure vicariously through the devil to make sure that your kid knows about all the smut, all the TV programs, all the latest, you know, filth that's out there. They're educated, Brother Jonathan. They know what's up. And here's how, because the devil knows this. Weekly activity. Why don't you do something stupid with your kid once a week, at least? What do you mean, Brother Matt? My wife and I were talking about this. Her dad, my, my wife's dad, is like the best dad in the world. Like, he is, obviously, you know, to her, you know, sorry, Dad, <laughs> my dad, but he, he is a trip. He's crazy. And you see him, you know, he's going around the yard with the grandkids when we show up, you know, and they're looking for the biggest rock. They're looking for the, you know, they're on a treasure hunt around the backyard. And he's so good with the kids. And I asked my wife, I said, was he like that with you guys? And she's like, yeah. And every one of you have a wonderful relationship with your parents. I, I envied that Amen. about my wife and her upbringing. They are so close with their parents, so tight with their dad. You know what? He pulls the heartstrings, and my wife would still cry. Her dad, uh, her, I get distracted very easily. Uh, her dad could come up to her right now and emotionally pull those heartstrings, even though she's married to me, and produce an emotion and effect in her heart right now to make her cry because of the relationship. Some of you haven't had that with your kid in a very long time. Some of you, you go to pull the heartstrings. I'm your mother. I work 24 hours a day, seven days a week for you. And you need to work four hours more. <laughs> and they walk away, slam the door. You try to pull those emotional heartstrings and nothing happens. Well, why? Because her dad made, a, made an effort to do something stupid with them every week. Whether it's building a fort with pillows. My teenager? Really? Yeah! Do it! Go through the house, uh, moms and dads that you paid all that money to have cleaned, and, uh, you know, you just take all the cushions off, pile them, and say, hey, son, go up ten stairs and jump off. I'll vote. I don't care what it, Brother Matt, the medical expenses, the bills, you'll save your kid because they'll love you more. Do something crazy with your kid that they'll remember. We were talking about the other night. Yeah, my dad made the ironing board a landing strip for our paper airplanes, you know. Whatever it is. It was something stupid, something retarded that you can just go, why do we even have fun at that? But because they were doing it with mom and dad, it didn't cost a dime. They wanted to spend time with me. The attraction was there. And you may save your kid from some sin. Something real quick, this is just real quick, something educational. 
The dumbing down of society is ridiculous. Educationally, we're struggling with our children. And I'll move on. I'll say something I shouldn't. Something spiritual. Something spiritual. How about, how about what I'm about to tell you, this prayer lesson on prayer, how about this with your kids once a week? How about you come in on your child's prayer time once a week so that you're making a connection with them spiritually? There we go. Spiritually make a connection with your kids once a week. Say, Brother Matt, I haven't made a spiritual connection with my child since they got saved. That's the problem. Here it is, something physical. Do something physical with them. Our young men do not know how to work. They know how to play. They know how to do things with the opposite gender. They're getting all tied up with that. How come they're picking up on that from mom and dad's relationship and not the work ethic? Lack of training. Man, I, me and mom are affectionate and we show what that relationship should be. Great. Well, what about junior's work ethic? Something physical. Get him out in the yard, put a shovel in his hand, get him to work. One boy's got poison ivy all over his hand and his eyeballs. He's coming to work, coming to school, you know, he can barely open his eyes. What happened? I work with Brother Matt. <laughs> you know, and I take the kids out all the time. We're doing a little side work here and there. Not for the money, Brother McCain, but for the work, the physical labor. And it's good for him. Something physical. Let's get in a lesson tonight. Look at, and real quick, I'll fly through the beginning here so that we can get to the lesson. Hey, teens are mirrors. You know that? They're mirrors. They're reflecting the home. The kids are mirrors. Scary, isn't it? Hebrews, Hebrews 12, verse 1. Jump around a little bit. You know, it, it's always what you put into it, too. You know, we're, we're in our fourth year. Isn't that crazy? It seems like we just got here yesterday. We're in our fourth year of ministry here at this church, working with some of these kids. Our fourth year. <laughs> it's crazy. Time flies, doesn't it? Some of your kids, I got pictures that when we first started our first activities, I think of Gabby and the Beards, uh, little Shane. You no, know, oh, he wasn't in the youth group. It was Alan with the glass. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's crazy. They just look, you know, they're so, so small. They've grown up so fast. Um, but they're what you put into it. Hey, parents, if you don't like what you're getting out, change the formula. Change what you're putting in. This is just how I did it. Well... You satisfied with that? Moving on. Prayer. All that was free and introduction. Hey, guess what? My wife's pregnant. Okay, cool. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? We're going to have one of our own. So now you can look at me and go, all right, let's see how Junior's going to do. <laughs> all these little one, two, three, four, five, Brother Matt, let's, let's see how it's going to work in your life. Hey, I'm ready for the challenge. I'm ready for it. Yeah, it is good. My wife... If I pass the challenges of her being pregnant is what I'm realizing, I got nothing to worry about Junior. We're sitting on the couch the other night, right? She's, like Brother Kevin says, it's like someone stole her batteries. You know what I mean? She's tired all the time, you know? Always drained. Nine o'clock hits. <laughs> and it's like, wake up, wake up, you know? And I, I don't get going until about nine o'clock. I'm a night owl. I don't know how y'all are. But I'm, I'm a one o'clock in the morning, you know, one thirty in the morning kind of person. And three cups of coffee later, you know. And so I'm sitting there on the couch with my laptop, the usual. She's over there at 9 o'clock, pumpkin crashed, you know, out. And um, the dog, the German Shepherd's over there laying guarding the front door, Hank as usual. The beagle's on the other couch, sound asleep. He sleeps 24-7 anyway. What good is a beagle, you know? Unless there's a rabbit in the house, he's sleeping. And that's a rare occasion. And so we're sitting there. All of a sudden, is this okay I'm telling this? Are you going to be upset? <laughs> anyway, y'all pray for me. But I'm sitting there at the couch. I got my laptop, cup of coffee. Sarah's sawing logs. All of a sudden, her battery's kicking. Ah, spiders! Spider on the ceiling! And the dog goes crazy. The German shepherd, Burr! and very next words out of her mouth, Hank, shut up! I'm like, Back this up, hit rewind. Number one, you about spilt my coffee on my laptop. You're the one screaming spiders. Then the dog barked, and you're yelling at the dog? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. So, y'all pray for me. And, and it was just like, spiders. <laughs> right back to sleep. So, I don't even know what's going on. Y'all pray for me. Y'all use this message for me. Anyways, that's just one of many stories. I got a few more. Come see me after. I'm going to need marriage counseling after this pregnancy. 
Hebrews 12.1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. Hey, with patience. Sometimes we're running, and this message was for me. When I told these young men this, this lesson, my Sunday school class, I said, this is what Brother Matt needed today. Let me give it to you. With patience. We're so focused on, as men, I don't know about you women sometimes, but we men, 10 years down the road, I'm going to build my empire. <laughs> you know, the future is waiting, you know, and we're always living in the future. And then one hero after another of mine, one family member after another falling into sin. Why? We're not focused on today. There's no patience to the race. We're, we're looking at, bless God, I'm ready for heaven, son. <laughs> it could be any minute, right? Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that, that uh, eastern sky splitting. What's that mean? I don't know. That's what the song says. You know, nobody understands. That's what I'm ready for. The Lord's coming back, amen. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. We're all in the future, right? And I'm all for the Lord coming back and all those messages, but run with patience. That's detail to what's going on now. You understand? So let's focus on not just the race, but the route in the race. Let's not focus on the game tonight, winning the whole game. Let's focus on it's first and ten. We're about to make an effort to get downfield, and we hate Houston. <laughs> you know, and, and, and we're about to make an effort here to get a first down down the field. We want four well, or maybe two consecutive downs that equal ten yards. We're focused on completions, Brother McCain. We don't want to make an interception this play, so we're going to huddle up. We're going to discuss the play. I'm going to give you a route, and that route is going to lead to success. So often, Lord, pray for my son. He marries right. I don't know why I use the southern accent when it comes to prayer. <laughs> yeah, pray. I am from Tennessee. Uh, you know, Lord, help this in the future. Lord, heal my whatever it is. We don't ever pray for, God, help my son to make the right decision today. So we're huddling. We're going to run with patience the race that's set before us. Why don't we jump over to Matthew chapter 6. Hurry, hurry. I used all my time telling pregnancy stories. Matthew 6. The huddle is the prayer. The huddle for the play, discussing what we're about to do is the prayer. Which way do I run, Ray Rice? Which way do I go, Flacco? Well, we're going to set that. And it's going to be determined by our blockers. They're going to create the hole, and you're going to run right through it, Brother Johnny. And that hole that they created because we orchestrated this whole play, this play, not the next one, is going to lead to success. So let's get it all down. What are we going to do today? What are we going to do this play? All right, he's going to block. He's going to do this. He's going to... And you know that's how God works. God's very detail-oriented. And he looks at you and he says, I want you to go right here. But we were so focused on the affairs of today or what tomorrow will bring that we miss the play and miss the will of God. The, the goal of, of this lesson, this brief lesson, I'll go right through it. I don't know if it'll be brief or not. The goal of this lesson is so that you don't fall into sin, number one, and that you're successful today. And then you'll be successful tomorrow and then the next day. That's the goal of of what I'm about to tell you. We're going to run the race with patience by getting in the huddle every day, the prayer time. And this huddle is so important because it determines whether or not I succeed on this next down, this next play. Look at it. Look at verse 13. Of Matthew chapter 6. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You see the importance there, and lead us not into temptation. I can just picture Ray Rice in the huddle. Hey, yo, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you better, you better hit that block. You better be there. You know, I don't know if that's how it sounds. You better be there, son, because you better not lead me into this. Because if I get in there, you know what I'm saying, and I'm short and everything, look about to bust my 5'5", five, five, right there in the numbers and take me up and throw me down, and this is going to be a down, you know what I'm saying? Then it's going to be a loss of yards. I don't even know what's going on, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a first down. I can see him. 
lead me not into temptation. That was my Ray Rice impression. <laughs> and so he looks to his blockers and says, you better be there because you're leading the way for me. When we pray, hey, God, lead me not into temptation. God, help me make the right move this moment of time. Let me give you a few points uh, that go along with this thought. Number one, approach the play with. Approach the play. And when I'm speaking of the play, I'm speaking of the prayer for today. Do we understand? Are we on the same wavelength? The prayer for today, Brother Ryder, it's today. I'm, I'm, I'm huddling this morning to see what the play for today is going to be. We're not looking into the future. We're looking into today. Approach the play with, number one, dependence on God. Dependence on God. Look at verse 9. After this manner, therefore, and we understand, listen, that this, the Lord's Prayer is a model prayer. It's not, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is now. What are you saying? The Lord's Prayer. No, it's a model prayer. He wants you to pray like this. After this manner, this is how I want you to do it. After this manner, not vain repetition, I want you to put the thought into your prayer. I want you to put the thought into the huddle. I want you to put the thought, Brother Troy, into the play for today so that we're successful for today so that we have a tomorrow according to God's will and plan. I got a plan for my child. I got a plan for my life. I got long-term goals. Is God involved? Is he? Have you consulted him on the plan for your children? I know we've already, we've been praying for this baby before we ever got pregnant. We got pregnant. That's right. We. <laughs> you like that? We've been praying about it. God, help me. God, help my wife. Help us to make the proper decisions. Help me to get in the book. I'm huddling for this play. Hey, guess what? Huddle in the beginning of your day, the prayer time, and say, number one, I'm going to approach this day, this play, with dependence on God. But in verse 9 again, I'm going to quit chasing these rabbit trails. Our Father, which art in heaven. Look at verse 11. Give us this day our daily, say it with me, bread. It's dependence. Your prayer in the morning, your morning huddle, your morning talk with God for success for your day, and we'll define that at the end of the lesson, has to begin with dependence on him. God, I not only am depending on you because you are my father. You know, you depended on your dad. And some of you still haven't gotten over it because your dad let you down. But guess what? Our father which art in heaven ain't never going to let you down. Our father which art in heaven owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Come on with that. And I, I could use a little cattle right now, God. I need a need supplied. Well, if it's up to you, God, maybe it'll get mad because it is up to him. Our Father. Do you know who you're praying to? Oh, man, my kid, I'm about to kill him. <laughs> Our Father. Because when you, as the Father, don't have the answer, our Father does. Amen. What about today? What about the play? What am I going to do? We'll get into take no thought for tomorrow. Right now, the play, the huddle. What am I going to do? Lead me not into temptation. Realize, number one, that I'm your Father. Depend on me. You just take the steps. You just pray to me. You just worry about what I'm about to tell you. Because your daily bread, if you want it, it'll come from me. Now, you got the capabilities. you got the willpower to go out there and get your bread yourself today. But it won't mean as much. It won't be contentment. I think that's what's going on. we got people praying for all, everything under the sun, but not for today. When you approach your prayer closet in the morning, approach it with dependence on God. Number two, approach it with discipline to fear God. Proverbs 1.7. Hurry, Proverbs 1.7. Proverbs 1.7. Approach it with dependence on God. My daily bread, my daily needs are going to come from you, God, because you are my Father. And the fear of the Lord, Proverbs 1, 7, is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. A fool would come out of that huddle and run the opposite way. A fool would not go to the huddle at all. Can I get a witness? I'm about to go on my day all on my own. Go for it. Hey, Ray, come on. The huddle's over here. I got this, Joe, for real. I'm an all-star. Isn't that how we Christians are? I'm an all-star. I'm going to take on my day. I'm going to take on this play all by myself. I don't need God. I don't need prayer. Hmm. 
dependence on God is first. Discipline to fear God is second. We understand that all instruction, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of it all, comes from a discipline to fear God. Why do I say discipline? Look at verse number 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because it's his. You have to discipline yourself to fear him. What do you mean, Brother Matt? I mean literally, look at me now. Equating this to football. Five, whatever, what's Ray Rice? Five, five, eight. Coming up to a big 300 pound, almost seven foot lineman. What can put a hurting on him? And if the play isn't orchestrated right, listen, he's going down. Listen to me tonight. Where does the fear need to be? On the lineman or on the execution of the play? Execution of the play. I'm afraid I'm going to take the wrong step. Because if I do, the consequences will be great. If we fear God for the instruction, we won't have to worry about the sin that could come into our lives. Let me back up. I don't think you're with me. Instruction to avoid the things that we fear could be avoided by fearing God. He gives the plan. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Comes through communication. So if I say, God, I'm, I'm scared, God. I'm scared I'm going to get it wrong. I fear you because you're the almighty. You're the playmaker. You're the one that leads me to success. I, I plead the, the blood. I plead the word. I plead your grace. I plead your mercy. I fear you. I never have to fear the buildings of the world. I never have to fear the sin that's out there because I fear the, the one who's making it. If I take the wrong step, I let the whole team down. Ray Rice can't be afraid of that lineman. He's got to be afraid of taking the wrong step. Discipline to fear God. Prayer first has to begin with dependence on God, but then discipline to fear him. Here's, here's a red flag that you're not disciplined to fearing God. Look at verse 21. This passage is so rich. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Foolish spending is a lack of determination and a heart that is wicked. How do I know that I'm not disciplined? How do I know that my discipline is not set on the play? I'm spending frivolously. My treasure is other places. My heart is not with God. Do we understand? I'm depending on God through prayer, but I'm not disciplined enough to go to him for the plan. I have to compensate the plan by getting a second job, and I'm not against those things. Stay with me. I'm going to compensate by my lack of prayer, by my lack of discipline to understand the path that he wants me to walk, and I'm going to go put my treasure other places. I'm going to go put my money over here instead of the orphanage. I'm going to refinance my house because I want A, B, and C instead of I want to help the children's home. You see, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We, we, we're focused on, yeah, I need to pray to do more things, but God says if you enter the prayer closet with the wrong attitude, the outcome will be the same. Unsuccessful. When you walk into that prayer closet, you pray, our Father. I'm your, I'm your God. I'm going to give you your daily bread. You better be dependent on me, bucko. And number two, you better have the discipline to fear me because I, I, I run this. I'm running the route, God. I'm in the huddle. I'm praying for you. And God, I want to have the discipline. God, I want to make the right moves. Why are you investing your money foolishly? Why are you spending in places? Man, why am I? Ah, because I'm not disciplined to give God the fear. I'm afraid I'm not going to meet my bills. So I'm going to go pay that instead of my tithe. Money is, is the mirror for adults. Have you all realized that yet? Now I'm an adult. Now I, I've got a wife. Now I have a job. I have BGE. I have home. <laughs> I have to pay for it. I got bills. I got Verizon. You know what I'm saying? I got a car payment. Oh, that was the worst mistake of my life right there. <sighs> Always paid cash for my vehicles, and then I decided to get a car payment. That was a mistake, right? You know, now in our society, it's a, just a given that everyone's going to have a car payment. It doesn't have to be that way. We make frivolous decisions, and that shows a lack of discipline towards the fear of God. And that shows the lack of prayer in general. How are we entering our prayer closet? We're falling into evil today, folks. We're sinning. Our marriages are falling apart because of sin. You're not accomplishing the work of God because you're sinning. How we avoid that sin? 
Number one, depend on God. Number two, have discipline to fear God. And number three, here's where it all just ties in, direction to pursue God. You see, when we depend on him and we're disciplined towards him, there's a healthy direction to pursue him. When I go in my prayer closet, this is where I told the fellas, God, God, I need you. God, I'm dependent on you for my daily bread. I need you to have success today. And my wife's upstairs getting ready. I walk downstairs. I let my dogs out the back and I hit the couch. You know what I mean? My, my spot, Brother Troy, where I go every day. It's where I put my knees. It's where I put my face in my couch. And I approach that couch saying, oh, God, Oh, God, i got to depend on you. It's only through you that I'm going to avoid evil today. It's only through you that I'm going to avoid sin today. And God, give me the discipline to fear you. God, give me the discipline to come back to this prayer spot every day. God, give me the discipline to run the right route, because if you have the discipline, number three, you'll have the direction to pursue God and avoid evil. Why those two steps and the third step of pursuing God? Why is that? Look at the end of the chapter. Verse 34, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Hey, let me help y'all. There's enough evil to go around for today. You don't have to worry about the evil for tomorrow. Hey, your marriage could fall apart today. You understand? You could cheat on your wife today. You could lose your child uh, today. Let me just put things on the bottom shelf. Your your child could lose her virginity today. Somebody's got to say it. Your child could get addicted to alcohol today. Sufficient is the evil enough for today. Why am I going to prayer? Why do I need direction to pursue God? Because there's evil today. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Go hurry. Ephesians chapter 6. This is the message. All that was introduction. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Verse 10. Sorry, line. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. Dependence on God. Discipline to fear Him. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Look at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the what? Evil what? Day. When are we going to realize that in verse 34, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof? You see, if I go into today without the dependence on God, I'm going to spend my money wherever I want. I'm not going to have the discipline to fear God. And guess what? I'm going to do, I'm going to take therefore no thought. I'm going to take thought. Which of you, by taking thought, verse 27, can add one cubit unto your stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spend. And yet I say unto thee that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? How do I enter my prayer closet? Dependence and discipline for a direction that is not for tomorrow but for today. Brother Matt, i got to have money. Brother Matt, I'm not making the bills. Honey, are the bills ever not paid? No. Do we go home at night and go, I don't have money. is that how we live? God's going to take care of us. If God's going to clothe that beautiful lily in the field that is here for just a short time, bless God, he's going to clothe me. Come on with that. If some grass for a wheat field is going to go into an oven, look so beautiful to look on, Brother Jonathan, those beautiful harvest wheat fields, he's going to clothe me. That ain't ever going in the oven, bless God, because I'm saved. You know what I'm saying? We are so focused on tomorrow, our kids are going to hell in a handbasket because you're focused on tomorrow. You're focused on the next competition. You're focused on the next clothing that they're going to wear. Can we put that on God? Hey, hey, child of God, daily bread? Child of God, direction? Child of God, why are you taking it on you? Hey, back up a couple of verses. This is where it's at. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. 
and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Folks, we're missing it. Our prayer time is on the need of tomorrow. God, help. That's where it convicted me. That's where it got me. God, help me get, help me get my car situation straightened out. God, help me with these kids. There's a southern accent again. God, help me with this baby and my wife. And God, my prayer is corrupted. My prayer is corrupted. I should have started with, you got this, God. Hey, God, I fear you and only you. I don't fear the things of this world. I don't fear my depravity. I don't fear my inability. I don't fear my lack of financial funds. I don't fear the stock market. I fear you. And God, can you give me the instruction? You know what? He's done it every time, hasn't he? Then everything seems to fall into place. And the direction comes to pursue God. And all the other stuff fades away. Has your prayer life been corrupted tonight? What are you praying for? Let me help you with this statement. Sufficient is the evil of today. Sometimes, let me just sit down and chat with you. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one, and I know I'm not, that just looks at these kids. I just, I'm a youth pastor. I'm sorry. I talk a lot about kids. because That's just what I do. You know how when you get around each other, and, man, what did you do today? Well, I built me the... A new shed. <laughs> well, I fixed that car. I talk about kids. Not gossip, just, man, they're doing good. And that's what I do. I'm a youth pastor, just in case you didn't know. Sometimes I feel like I sit around and I go, we're missing the evil of today. We're letting them follow the evil of the world because we don't see it. We're caught up. I'll say that again. We're caught up in flesh. So-and-so, man, all she's talking about is that boy. Sufficient is the evil of today. All she's talking about is that girl. All she's doing is gossiping. Well, she's just like her mother. <laughs> Sufficient is the evil of today. Is it the principal and is it the youth pastor that are the only ones? And I know when I have children, God bless them. They're going to be hellions just like the rest of them. I understand that. An old preacher used to say that. Come to our church every year, he'd preach, my little devil's sitting in the front pew, bless God, and every year. And you know what his kids turned out? He didn't put them on a pedestal. And I'm not trying to put your kids on a pedestal. I'm just saying, sufficient is the evil of today. Forget the kids. What about you? You haven't prayed for God to meet your daily needs in forever. And if it was, it was just because you're selfish. And God said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Matt. Matt. Shut up. You're not dependent on me. If you would just depend on me for one second, I would meet those needs. What are you doing with your money? Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I want your heart. I want it. Have discipline to fear me, son. I'm your father. Oh, God, you're right. God, you're telling the truth. God, I fear you. God, is this the right step to take? When was the last time you asked God, God, what do you want me to do today? Man, I'm just going to work. Is that the job he wants you to work? Is that the step he wants you to take? That's why we walk by soul after soul after soul, and we're not soul winners. We're not soul conscious because we don't pray this way. I'm telling you, this has changed my life. Dependence on God. Discipline to fear God. And direction to pursue God. How are we doing? I know I was epically failing in this. And you know what? The problem this hit me is the fact that a lot of folks around us are falling into sin. And I thought, you know what? I know why. Sufficient today is the evil thereof. Folks, I don't want to see another person fall to sin. I don't want to see another kid. I don't want to lose another kid. I don't want to let the devil get another notch in his belt, another trophy for his case. We've heard all those sermons, another castaway. How are we going to beat it? Dependence on God. Discipline to fear him and direction to pursue him. It's done through prayer. It's very simple. It's, it's, you know what it is? It's humility. But it's recognizing the evil. You see it? 
If you don't see it, chances are you're tied up somewhere. I give you the biggest revelation, and that's money. The love of money is the root of all evil. It's the root. It's that cause down there that, that when we take a look at where our finances are going, we can see it. Oh, I can, I can track that one. Wake up! There we go. There we go. We're coming back. Signing out. Let's take a nap. Everybody's tired, okay? Wake up. Listen to me. <laughs> it's not every day people fall asleep for my preaching. Usually I'm loud when I get quiet. Do you see the evil? Hey, do you care about it? Say, Brother Brown, I don't see it in my kids' lives. Please come talk to me. I'll tell you. I don't blame you. I just, I'm with them a lot. Brother McCain's with them a lot. We'll tell you. Hey, is my son, my daughter, mm -hmm. weren't you, weren't I in the same boat, in the same position? We've got to be training them. These young people need direction. Where's their direction coming from? A discipline of fearing God and a dependence on God? Well, you have to train that into them, mom and dad. And I go back to the beginning part of the message. Weekly. Do you pray this way? When you pray, pray like this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're saying. Because sufficient today is the evil. How about we save another marriage? How about men, we don't fall into temptation? How about we avoid that? How about parents, we don't lose another kid? How about we ourselves don't steal from the company? And we're, we're the hardest workers there. And we're, we're good examples and we're good lights. It's going to start through prayer at the beginning of the day. Every head bowed, every eye closed.